Hey everybody, it's Mr. Moreau, and I would like to just go through with you briefly the um, the key and some follow-up concepts and thoughts on our Beasties Phylogenetic Tree Lab. Uh, so I take it you've already read the hypothesis, background, intro, all of that. Uh, and I'm going to skip ahead to our actual tasks here. Um, so Table 1 gave us the uh, specific trait of the organisms we see in the pictures down below. And then it also gives us kind of a uh, distinction, distinction between zero and one. Now, sometimes in uh, a phylogenetic tree uh, like this, a zero means that they do not have it. That, that might be shown as a, uh, like a minus sign. And then a one means that they do have it, or that's the other thing. That might be shown as a plus sign. So occasionally that notation is also used. In this activity, a zero versus a one indicates that they have it or they do not or that it's one variety versus the other instead of a minus and a plus. But that sometimes notation uh, can also be seen. Okay, down here, uh, you may want to take a, perhaps a screenshot or a pause of the video at this point. Um, so I've color-coded the row of each organism uh, with a one versus a zero, showing that they have one or the other variety of that specific characteristic. So for example, um, organism A, if we just read across that really fast to make sure you understand how this works, uh, for A, eye size, I have a 1 because they have large eyes. For A, teeth, I have a 1 because they have pointy teeth. For A, antenna, I have a 1 because it is a uh, branched antenna. Uh, for A, fin, I have a 1 because they do have a fin present. For A, feet, I have a 0 because they have flat feet. And then for A, 1, I have a 1. I'm sorry, for A, tail, I have a 1 because they have a... Uh, what is it called, brushed or brushy, uh, brushy tail instead of a pointy one. And then for A, spots, they do not have spots, so I put a zero. For A, beard, I put a zero because they do not have one. And then for A, tongue, I have a zero because they do not have one. And then I took that information and I rearranged the, uh, the rows um, to sort of rank them based on the differences they have between the outgroups. And I went ahead and totaled those differences off to the right. Now, one thing that you might see here is that we have two different organisms that are sort of tied with the differences we see between them and the outgroup. Uh, and that would be letter F and letter B. Uh, so that is going to be an extra thought for us down here. And here's what I ended up going with on my phylogenetic tree. Uh, so you can see that I've written on those little hash marks, which represent an ev evolutionary event, uh, some new characteristic appearing. Uh, and that's what allowed me to sort of make those decisions between F and B. I noticed that uh, letter B was very similar to letter D. In fact, there was only one thing that set them apart. D and B are basically the same thing, except for B has a beard. So those two definitely belong on those, uh, those clades originating from that very recent common ancestor, that node. Um, so that allowed me to distinguish between where I wanted to put B and F. But if you go through my, uh, my table here and look at my phylogenetic tree, you can see that uh, each of the hash marks that I've labeled with uh, a characteristic does show um, a clear path of how we kind of take that evolutionary route from a, um, an ancestor long ago to all these divergent um, uh, different organisms you see alive now. And then here's one little note I have. Fin and branched antenna, uh, those occur in between um, diverging, uh, like a divergent event between different common ancestors. So there's really no way for us to know if I should have put fin here and branched antenna there or if it goes the other way. So we don't need to make that distinction or worry about that fact. We just simply don't have enough information to decide which of those may have occurred first. And that is our um, conclusion to our uh, phylogenetic tree. Here are my thoughts on these uh, final answers here. I think everything was probably pretty straightforward for you. You probably had to use your imagination a bit for letter B. And then for letter E, uh, this autopomorphic trait um, refers to something that is unique to a specific clade or taxon. So only that type of organism has that feature. For example, only beastie letter C has pointed feet. That is a unique trait to letter C. And only beastie letter B has a beard. That is unique to them. So that's autopomorphic. And that'll do it for our review of our phylogenetic tree lab.